gorgeous. took refuge in this little bay. I'm kind of stuck already. I'm on Superior's schedule right now and for the next 10 probably days. Um, there's really no way to say what's going to happen but this is this is kind of what you don't want to happen here. Waves are up, there's two three foot swells, wind is up, an onshore wind, thick fog, so it's pretty much the worst conditions for navigation. So I'm just gonna wait it out. I promised Erin I would be safe. I have to come home to her. You know, there's no other alternative. She's usually pretty cool about my trips, but she was understandably anxious about this one, so uh, I owe it to her to play it safe, so. I'm here in the canoe on the water, waiting it out. Not so bad. The skies have cleared up and the sun has burnt off the fog. Now I can see islands in the distance and such, which is all I need to navigate here. That landform coming into view there is the sleeping giant. What a sight. All right, buckle down. I'm on a small island here, Middlebrun Island. And I'm at a bit of a critical juncture. We've got Sleeping Giant behind me at the end of the Sibley Peninsula. It's on the north shore of Lake Superior here. And over there, and the, far in the distance are the Pops. A nice little mountain range, if you call them mountains, hills at least. And now I need to do a large crossing. And conditions I feel like are safe for me to do that right now. So I'm inclined to do it. Alternatively, they could camp here, see what happens this evening, make the crossing in the evening or in the morning when it's likely to be calmest, but I've got a tailwind. The, the rollers are pretty gentle, so I feel like I can do this safely. I'm just taking a moment here to, to really think it through. I'm going to give it a shot, at least get out there a little bit and see how I feel. I can always back pedal, but I think this is my chance. I got a nice tailwind. The rollers are pretty gentle, so this is it. That island out there is about three kilometers almost away, and that's my next point of refuge. Made it to the first island, which is occupied by gulls. They don't like me. And I can camp on some islands over this way, if need be. Daryl said you can camp there in a pinch, or a carry on. Just checking out the island. It seemed like a worthwhile stop either way. Pretty unique, an incredible view here. It is tempting to camp, but conditions seem even better over here. That's the Porphyry Lighthouse over there. It's quite a bit of history. I'd like to visit, you're allowed to. I'm not sure it's in the cards based on the, the wind and my schedule.
pretty thick bush in here. Not the best for camping. Just gonna check the weather again. Looks like the weather's gonna be okay if I wanna go across. This is the Sibley Peninsula, Sleeping Giant there. That's where I launched. That's where I am. And then I just need to get across here and then I can camp in that red dot there if I like. Whoa. <laughs> Almost went for a plunge. But I'm in a dry suit, so it doesn't really matter, does it? Okay, onward. I don't want to camp here. Conditions seem perfectly reasonable. Let's keep her going. So I'm heading for Hard Scrabble Island over there. Great name. There's a sailboat right by it, another one. There's actually a, quite a sailing and yachting culture here on the North Shore of Superior, which is pretty cool. Maybe if I'm lucky, they'll invite me aboard for some cocktails and lobster. Speaking of lobster, I have absolutely no meat in my food barrel. Any meat I want to eat on this trip, I'm going to have to catch fish, I mean. Some big swells here, but they're gentle. They're not breaking over the canoe, not cresting hardly at all. So it's quite nice. Oh, there's your big boy. Just coming into Horseshoe Cove. I think this will be home for tonight. Beginning to wonder if there was a campsite here. But it is right here and it is really sweet. Just up in this clearing here, there's a bench, fire pit. Nice landing here on this pebble beach. Perfect. And according to Daryl and Zach's guidebook for this area, it's supposed to be a little trail to take me over to a beach where I can get a sunset view. But first order of business is getting out of this dry suit. I'm eager to get it off, but it was so great to have it for peace of mind and safety. Oh. Oh. That could have been a white knuckle paddle if I didn't have this insurance policy. Oh, it feels good. Oh. Really nice. Just nowhere to hang a hammock, really, though. Here's that trail. Just 10 meters down the trail. Nice beaver lodge. And there's some moose poop. Trail is a really nice little X factor for this campsite, and this should be a great place for sunset. Because this is a coastal trip, pack some luxuries, a liter of red wine. 6.30, just gotta yeah, make dinner, set up the hammock, that's it for today. Fantastic day, I feel accomplished for pushing through that and getting that big crossing done. That's the biggest crossing of the trip, so everything else should be more straightforward. So anyway, cheers. Oh yeah! <laughs> Found a spot to sneak in the hammock here, right beside the actual campsite. Perfect little view of this bay. Oh, this is nice. Got a few souvenirs out of this fire pit to take home, but not too bad. Oh, there's a message from Erin. I just sent her a text on the Zolio saying that I made it across. Got some old man's beard here, which usually lights like gasoline, but it's a little damp, just slightly. It'll go. It'll go, I said. Oh, a mosquito flew right into the flame. Awesome!
But yeah, the Zolio, whatever it's worth to me, which is a lot, it's so useful out here, it's worth just as much to Erin at home. So, really such a great tool. She can sleep easy tonight, and I will too. Veggie chili, lots of beans. Oh, I needed that. Didn't stop for lunch, so that tastes extra good. Hunger is the best seasoning. There's a lot of history in this area. First Nations history going back thousands of years. But an industrial history as well. Forestry, fishing, mining. No idea what this is, but it was right there. Still in strong shape, built to last. And the marina where I launched today, Silver Islet, was in the 70s and early 80s, the most lucrative silver mine on earth. Now it's just full of nice little cabins right by the water. Saw a little notch in this stick so that the guy line can rest in there. Just get my tarp up a bit, give me a better view. I've got everything done that I need to do for the evening and for a quick start tomorrow morning. Even charred some firewood on the fire so it's, you know, charcoal-y. And I'm gonna go check out the sun. It's not gonna be sunset yet. You have to stay pretty late this time of year to see the sunset. So I'm just gonna see what I see at this point in time and hit the sack. I wanna get a good start tomorrow morning. Hopefully get some calm paddling and I'm sure I'll have lots of sunsets yet to come. After five, time to get up. I can hear waves splashing already, so it must not be that calm. So today I want to make it to Stanton Island, where there's supposed to be a nice view of the Pops, that little mountain range. That's it. That's my goal for the day. And I want to fish. Yesterday with the, the chop, the heavy chop, it wasn't safe to fish. If you end up hooking up, you're not focused on the waves and the wind, so uh, it just wasn't an option yesterday. The fishing on this lake, you never fish like Superior. It can be incredible. It's a bit of a feast or famine scenario sometimes, but generally the lake trout are pretty reliable. And if not lake trout, we can get coaster brookies, which are huge. The world record brook trout was caught not too far from here, 14 and a half pounds. 14 and a half pound brook trout. Uh, you get uh, steelhead, salmon if you're lucky, or if you have a downrigger. 
and the oldest fish, the biggest fish in, in Superior, is not one I'll catch trolling. Uh, it's just not how you would catch a, a lake sturgeon. But they can grow to be over 200 pounds, 100 years old, 7 feet long. Just monsters lurking in the depths in there. The lake trout, they're no slouch either. They can get enormous in this lake. So we'll see what I luck into. Got one more can. And these ones have been rolling rock. I usually harp on the Coors Light, Bud Light, etc. So, just for the sake of a biased, unbiased argument, there's a rolling rock. Time to get back into the dry suit. I'm just going to do it halfway, not the top. And then if I get into some nastier water, I'll just zip up the top. It was too hot yesterday. Alright, this beaver can move on with his life. I'm moving on with mine. My favorite time of the day. Camp chores are done, full belly, full day to look forward to. 7 a.m., decent start, but uh, I'm probably gonna have to start waking up or just getting out faster because this is the nicest time to paddle on Superior. Fantastic morning. Sleeping giant back there, he's waking up. I'm waking up. Poor free lighthouse is just over there, and I would love to see it, but I just don't have time to see it properly. And with the nature of this trip, there's so many islands, channels, and bays, I cannot see everything. So if I can't see it properly, I'll wait. I'll hopefully come back someday here with Aaron. It'll be a special trip for us, and then we can see that properly. Zach, one of the authors of the guidebook I've got, he did a 50 day, 750 or so kilometer trip through this area. This is the Lake Superior National Marine Conservation Area and I'm sure he didn't even see every little nook and cranny so I just have to pick my battles here. Cool fact about this conservation area, it's the largest piece of protected fresh water on earth. Beautiful channel here between Edward and Porphyry Island. Great way to start the day. had my first bite. I was off before I could do anything. I was filming those loons actually. It's okay. There are the paps coming into view again. Starting another open water crossing, a little over two kilometers, much calmer conditions than yesterday. Although, I'm gonna do this up just in case. It's like being born. This guy just made an emergency landing here. <laughs> Came out of nowhere and just crashed into me. Anyway, he gets sanctuary here as long as he wants, or she. It's Magnet Island over there. Go halfway through the crossing, look behind me. Same view in front of me. This is why I'm wearing a full dry suit, latex gaskets, water can't get in. It's pretty buoyant, not to mention I have the PFD on. This would help me survive in, in the event that I just lost my balance or something for one second. That's all it would take. Uh, if you don't have a dry suit and you want to swim to shore to survive, you almost for sure won't make it unless you're a really good swimmer and you can close that distance in a few minutes. I don't think many people could do that. You'll die of hypothermia before you get there. Um, so I just want to stress the importance of, of experience, knowledge, local knowledge specific, specific to this lake, but also gear, gear that no knowledge can replace. The average annual water temperature in Superior is only four degrees Celsius. That's only a few degrees above freezing. So it is really a lethal lake. In Gordon Lightfoot's The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, he says, sings, the lake it is said never gives up her dead. And there's a morbid truth to that because 
the coldness of the water doesn't allow bacteria to grow like it normally would. So that bacteria decay, it causes the body to bloat and float. That doesn't happen here. It's so cold the bacteria doesn't grow like it normally would and you can actually just sink to the bottom and be well preserved for many many years. Really a lake that deserves a ton of respect and caution. Getting close to Magda Island now. Despite what I said about Superior, I'll also say that it's one of the most magical places I've ever been to. And it's my favorite lake in the world. Of any lake that I've seen, hundreds and hundreds of lakes, it's my favorite. Oh, we got, we got, oh, he's alive. He's alive, folks. Come aboard, welcome. So Magnet Island is called that because I guess it has some kind of magnetic disturbance. And it can actually throw off a compass by 30 degrees. Came to shore to stretch my legs. And surprisingly, someone has been here already. A moose. Interesting to see that all the way out here. Porcupine, no way. I wonder what that was. Just coming in here to have some lunch. It's only the second or third porcupine I've ever seen. On, a, on an island way out here. Cool. Hello. So awesome. <laughs> That's as fast as I've ever seen a porcupine move. Fantastic. Such a rare wildlife setting for me at least. Another good sized crossing here, two kilometers. Could have followed the shoreline, but it's actually very shallow. Surprising for Superior, which is so deep. And I couldn't even troll, so. I can change my fishing lock out here. Nothing yet. About time. I've been in disbelief. I was expecting really good fishing on this trip. But this is the third bite of the day and the first one that's actually been on long enough for me to do anything about it. Looks like a laker. Yep. Oh my, he's not tired yet. There we go. Keep him in the water. Arbless hooks. Too easily. Nice little lake trout. Would be a good eater. But not right now. I really want to get camp set up before the storm potentially rolls in. There are thunderheads all over there and pretty dark clouds, so that's my priority right now. That's Hugh Island behind me and two kilometers of open water ahead of me is Stanton Island. That's where I'll set up. Just heard the first booms of thunder. I'm pulling into camp right there. Perfect timing. More thunder. I'm a bit concerned about this site. It's more tent oriented. The trees look thick.
Okay, tarps up. Got a great view of the paps and hopefully a thunderstorm. That would be cool. Nice little windshield from these trees. If we get some driving rain, that could help. It's amazing how much these trees deflect the wind. As soon as I step out here, way stronger. I passed out for two or three hours. Only sprinkled unless I slept through more. But still looking nasty that way. It's just been, it's been all around, but I haven't gotten any of it yet. So I'm, hope, I'm cooking dinner and hoping it'll hold off while I do that. Beautiful beach site. I'm really digging this spot. Amazing panoramic view. Right as I took my last bite of dinner, it started to rain. Perfect timing. Wow, that was a close one. Dropped my bear spray and apparently the safety cap fell off. It triggered, sprayed up into the air a couple feet from my face and I lurched back before the cloud hit me. So that could have been bad. And I got to find that safety cap because without it, this thing is a time bomb. Found it. That's a relief. Without it, this thing would not be really safe to carry. Thunder off in the distance. It's always been an off, and off in the distance, but it's creating such an ambiance here with the Swainson's thrush, my favorite bird call, and this view, really off the charts. I kind of want to go to bed early. Uh, I might have a north headwind tomorrow, and I'd like to get an early start to get the beat on that, but I think I'm gonna have to stay up for sunset. This is incredible. I must have gotten some of the pepper or the bear spray on my hands and then touched my eye. It must have been the tracest amount, but man, it burns. I can't imagine what a cloud of that feels like. Oh, washing it's almost making it worse. It's just my left eye, so at least for now, you can see out of one eye. Oh. A rainbow. Wow. What a morning. 
Rainbow over the pops. It was up at 5 a.m. with the birds on the water just before 6 a.m. Just beat the buzzer at 5.59 a.m. Beautiful and calm, the wind was picking up and it just died, so that is a relief. The rainbow's getting better and better. I was looking for one all day yesterday with the showers and the sunshine. And there it is. Wow! Oh man, this moment is going to disappear. Just trying to soak it up. It's turning into a double. We got a double rainbow, folks. Best way to start any day. Lucky charms. Showers just started, and oh my goodness, we got a triple rainbow. One, two, three, four! There's a fourth rainbow! No way. Hope that's visible. That is unreal. I know I'm being the double rainbow guy right now, but that's four rainbows. Oh my goodness. Wow. What a morning. We're on the other side. I only see three, but three is still a lot of rainbows. Unbelievable. Have you ever seen a quadruple rainbow? Have you ever even heard of one? Have you seen a triple? What did I just witness? That was ridiculous. I'm exploring Sturgeon Bay this morning. I don't really know why. It's like probably a 10 kilometer detour and no real notable features other than the mouth of the Sturgeon River, which is hardly a river at all on the map. It's only shown as being a few kilometers long. Beautiful. A couple of sandhill cranes. They're huge. I saw its red head popping above the grass there, and they took off before I could start the camera. But beautiful. There they are. Dead ahead. Massive birds. Whoa! Spider webs! <laughs> Big spider webs. I guess I can see why this is called a river. It's not a long one. It's uh, kind of eerie. Probably almost never paddled. And I mostly came in here for the hope of wildlife like moose and I got sandhill cranes, so gladly take that. So quiet still.
having lunch on this little island. It's got more of this big plant. I wonder if it's Devil's Club, which is something that's mentioned in the guidebook. It's kind of unusual. Whatever it is, it's just crawling with insects. Oh, let me kind of swarm you. <laughs> Okay, burrito mix is rehydrated. Got cheese, hot sauce, and green onion in the wraps already. I don't know if it's this island or it's these plants, but it smells like poo. It's not that appetizing, but the burritos are very good. This archipelago is just incredible. Beautiful little islands and with this aqua marine water, they look so tropical. So alluring. All of them make you want to camp on them. Until they smell like poo. Sean just cast it out and it Hit it immediately. It's got some pretty decent fight to it. Most likely a laker. Probably a four plus pound laker. Maybe a bit bigger. You can see it down there. In this crystal clear water. Oh, look at those bubbles. Oh. Oh, oh, we just got off. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, it was probably a five pound lake trout. Pretty nice, but nothing crazy. Just coming into South Loon Harbor now. It's a cluster of islands. Provides a really nice sheltered area for anchorage or for camping and it looks spectacular. <laughs> There's a loon out there. How fitting. So it looked like a campsite here. Pulled up on shore and uh, I was wondering why there are chairs here and everything. It's because this is a sauna. Believe it or not, there's a network of saunas on Lake Superior. Wow. It's actually like a log sauna. Everyone decent? Oh man. Oh, it smells beautiful in here. Like an old cedar cabin. Oh, that's so cool. I'm not really the sauna type, but this is pretty neat. Even a mirror. How do I look? Very cool. Moss chinking. <laughs> and then a camo door. What a cool tradition. It looks like they set up curtains to kind of conceal it. That's interesting. And I would camp here, but it's a bit used for my liking on a wilderness trip. This would be an amazing place to come with Aaron. Going in the sauna alone sounds kind of lonely. And I have a campsite picked out for tonight on Lasher Island anyway, so. But what a spot. I just love it here. It's like being on Lake Superior, but on an inland lake with no portage. It's just sweet. Yeah. 
There used to be something here in Loon Harbor. There's like an old crib underneath whatever these parts are for. This maybe a boiler. Really don't know my machinery, my 1950s machinery too well. Those parts are just over there in that bay. Here's another one. Man, like rock solid stuff back in that day. And then this is a campsite here on this big slope, which I just want to walk up to give you a perspective on Loon Harbor. So because this whole trip is on the Lake Superior National Marine Conservation Area, as far as I know, drones are not allowed to be flown in conservation areas. So I'm just getting up as high as I can here. This, this harbor is enclosed by big islands, then it's dotted with small islands all in the middle. So just a beautiful spot. I am planning to overcome that uh, drone obstacle by hiking up one of Ontario's highest points uh, later in the trip so give you a better view of the whole area at that point notice some geese poop <laughs> look at that little guy oh there they are there was some geese poop on the slope there they were tucked away but that one gosling just came running down the hill toward me jumped in the water started swimming toward me and i just thought better of it Pretty amazing campsite here on this exposed rock. Someone must have gone OCD someday and organized all this firewood. Unless a storm blew it all up, but I find that hard to imagine. It's not even four o'clock, but I've been up and at it since five and my wrist is done for the day, so this'll do. Oh. Oh. Great dinner, non calzones, rehydrated veggies, pizza sauce, hot sauce, and some uh, goat cheese that I had a bit of excess of. On the water at 5.45 this morning, earliest start yet, and I didn't eat breakfast, um, so that's part of the reason why, but I've got some granola on the go, and the last of the goat cheese to eat up. Sean, just started trolling. My lure is bouncing off the rocks, and usually that's a sign to reel in before you snag, but I find it can be really triggering for fish. Tap on the bottom. What is that? It's a trout for sure. That's what you'd expect here. Some kind of trout. But, lake trout? Yeah, I think so. Yep. Wow, this one is really cool. It looks like this little leg is holding up this entire little cliff.
This is absolutely amazing. Bashand Island. So worth this little detour this morning. I could have, I had to head south to get here and I'm going north. Is it ever worth it? There are actually some little grasses and stuff growing on that rock. But how does that survive millennia of waves and ice and storms? That's incredible. Oh, the best is yet to come from Bashand Island. I thought I had seen the sea arch. I had not. I see it now. Oh man, I love these mornings. Creepy thing is, I can see like little pinholes of light through the rock. <laughs> it looks like it could collapse at any second. Like this is quite an overhang. Let's see it from the other side. <laughs> and on the other side, there's like a flower pot rock there. I thought yesterday morning would be impossible to top with that quadruple rainbow, uh, but this might have done it. This is more like it. Two fish this morning, another laker. Oh, it just popped off. I was just reaching for the underwater camera. If they're small or if I'm not keeping them, I'm just gonna film them underwater. It's better for them. Oops. <clears throat> Hard hit, heavy head shakes. Definitely some weight there. Oh, yeah. Feels pretty sturdy. It's at least a four pound fish. Ooh. Yeah, nice thick. Good length, flight trout. Come here. Oh yeah. Probably a five pounder, maybe even six. Okay. Wet my hands. Oh yeah. Nice, nice lake trout. Oh no! Stupid idiot. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Just imagine a lake trout the size, double the size of the ones that I've got. <laughs> it's okay, I can get more of those this trip. Shot at redemption here. This one doesn't feel nearly so big though. Yep, small lake trout. Let it pop off here underwater. See, this is much more what I was expecting. I actually couldn't believe the tough bite. Another three pound laker. I couldn't believe the tough bite the first two days. It's the last thing I expected. Just a sec. Thank you. All of them today on the Husky Jerk. It's a jerk bait, but I love trolling it. Troll it all the time. Trying to pop them off. A little slack now. <laughs> Good eating. Perfect eating fish. 
but it's still too early for me. Mm. Barbless hooks, he uh, he's stick somehow. Oh, this guy's busty. Interesting spot here on Arthur Island. Just so raw and harsh. Only small trees, and some of them are probably quite old. Just can't get big, no soil. Nice cliffs across the channel. Here's a question for the geologists out there. The rock here, from afar it looks like it's got bird poop all over it, but it's actually rocks embedded in it. Kind of easier to see here in the water when it's wet. Look, there's some quartz looking stuff. Some of it looks like geodes. Someone tell me. Scenery is always changing here. It's always dramatic. So beautiful. Forest fire, maybe 15 years ago, I would estimate. Fish on. I hope it's a brookie. I just have a, a feeling in this bay. Is that a pike? No. Nope. Oh. oh yeah, it's a brookie. It's a brookie. It is a brookie! <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, okay. First brookie of the trip. I thought I missed one earlier too. Ah, cool. Not legal to keep though. Just turn so I'm not backlit. The allowable size on Superior for brookies is 53 centimeters. That's huge. It's like 20, 22, 23, 24 inches, something like that. All right, wet my hands. Nice. Beauty. Square tail, red dots, blue halos. All right, thank you, thank you very much. Beautiful little fish. I wonder if it's the logs in here. There's a fair amount of debris, woody debris underwater, maybe from the forest fires. And I can see the brookies liking that. You, eh? Check this out. It's always creepy going beneath these things, but you have to remember they move in geologic time. That won't collapse for probably millennia. I'm into Shishi Bay, and I was planning on going right to the back of the bay, which is about eight kilometers from here. But the wind is against me, and then it would be against me again coming out tomorrow. So I'm just gonna cut across the mouth of the bay and carry on, just listen to the lake. It's been over two kilometers across Shishi Bay. And I promised Aaron I would wear the suit. I was doing a big crossing, but it is brutally hot. It's so hot with this suit on. Pretty choppy, but not as bad as day one. That was by far the least pleasant paddling. This is fine. Picked up. 
there. Once I started going with the wind, I was flying. Very unusual rocks here, like columns. Wow. Oh, Otter Island, what an amazing place. Another spectacular island. I shouldn't be surprised anymore, but I am. All right, I'm turning away from Otter Island. One more crossing, and then I should be protected by the mainland from this north wind. I think this is called Sail Rock. It's just sitting out here like an iceberg. Found camp for the day, and I think it's my favorite yet. Got a nice little babbling brook. Massively wide view. I can even see my old friends, the Paps, over there. Nice stony beach. And there's a lake a little ways that way. And I was wondering about bushwhacking into it, and there's actually, it looks like there's a trail. That might be fun to check out. It's four o'clock, so I probably have time to do that. And there's actually places to hang the hammock, which has been kind of a challenge. It's been better for tents actually, which is, I don't say that too often. Yeah, little trail. And this is an interesting place to have a trail because this is wild, remote. You have to boat a long way, even by motorboat to get here. That trail petered out pretty quickly. Might have just been a game trail. Yeah, looks really shallow and it became a real tangle to get in here, so forget it. Goes on beyond. Could be deeper over there. Maybe it's a brook trout honey hole, but I've got a pretty good lake where I came from. Message going through to Erin, just checking in with her, like I do every night on the Zolio. And checking the weather, it's looking clear tomorrow and uh, I don't know, it might rain in the future days, but uh, I was I was completely out of gas when I, after I bushwhacked and I finally took a little rest, I could hardly start again. I think I got too much sun and I had trouble sleeping last night, so feeling better after dinner, looking forward to tomorrow. I was wondering what that sound was earlier. Huh. Just a beaver.
morning, little beaver. 5.36 a.m., new best time. I'm leaving Dawson Creek and this cloud of mosquitoes behind. And it was actually a former logging camp right there. I, was, I felt like some of the trees looked planted just because they were too orderly. And yeah, I was reading the guidebook last night. It said that, and yes, that is called Dawson's Creek. This little cave in there if you needed a shelter. No time to check that out though. Gotta get around this point to see sunrise. Never enjoyed mornings more on any trip. Day five. Those beavers were awesome last night. Beavers aren't usually that interesting. You know, you see them swimming and they splash their tail and they're gone, but when you actually get to watch them, pretty cool. And I was just lying in the hammock and then heard these little cries. And I was thinking, what the heck is that? If you've never heard a young beaver cry before, it sounds a lot like a human baby or toddler. It's weird. Mom! <laughs> and yeah, if you're not expecting to hear a baby's voice <laughs> in the wilderness, it's pretty weird. But I've heard it before and I should have known, but it's been a while. I ended up backtracking just a little bit to that Dawson Creek uh, campsite just because the campsite here at Sail Rock is like a gravel slope and there wasn't really good hammocking opportunities, so that camp worked out great. That was probably my favorite so far. Either that or Stanton Bay. Stanton Island, you know. Just looking at a big nest, wondering if it could be an eagle. And Mama just came home. Or Papa. Funny how uncool an eagle's call is. That's why they always use red-tailed hawks in movies. I think that's the Juvie's head popping up there. Can't tell on the little screen. <laughs> Otter checking me out. I was just thinking to myself, how do otters know to not take a lure? Like they would chase a floundering fish if they got the chance. Why do they never take the lure? How do they know? They're just that much smarter than a fish. What do we got? Looks like a laker. Oh, yeah, just a laker, that's fine. Three pound laker or so, just the norm. Not worth netting. just reeling in and I paused and that's when I hit yeah another one just gonna let it pop off here another laker poor guy actually took it near the eye oh boy so he's a keeper brought this little bat just for this purpose if I needed to dispatch one quickly like that fish was just hooked near the eye I don't want to rip that out that just for humane purposes that has to be a keeper and I was looking for a fish to keep today anyway so that's perfect and it's yeah a nice nice eating size for one 
Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. I also just cut a couple of the gills. Heart keeps pumping for a couple of minutes after it's dead and it just pumps some of the blood out through its gills and it just get it out of the flesh. Another laker. Yes. Mind boggling scenery in this spot. Just uh, south of Spar Island. I would love to stop here and clean that trout. There's a massive beach here. Very long beach. But I'm paddling on glass and I have to cross the Nipigon Strait which is kind of a notorious passage so I think I'll continue and try and get that done and then once I'm across then I can have my fish reward. That hilly region up there is Fleur Island. I had no idea it was so scenic. Just like that, the wind picks up. Stiff breeze from the east just kicked up, as predicted on the Zolio, which I keep here in my life jacket pocket. It's also my SOS beacon. And that was such good information to have. And then it's gonna turn south, which is worse. It'll be an onshore wind, but just knowing that, and getting myself a push this morning. Haven't even eaten properly at all, but it'll be worth it once I get to the other side safely, out of the front of the south wind coming. I'm at the start of the Nipigon Strait. About two kilometers to get across here. Reel in. Chops picking up, but it's still perfectly reasonable. About 80% of the way, and in the lee of Plur Island now. Felt like a long haul, but it was it was pretty straightforward. The wind didn't kick up too badly. Oh, good. Been on the go for five and a half hours now today. Just a, hand, a couple handfuls of granola. I have a real appetite for that fish. Can't wait. Have an appetizer of some cheese and crackers. Bought this 50% off, went into the fridge for a while, and it's been with me on this trip out of refrigeration for several days now, so. Excellent. Hmm, maybe a little funky. Found this big piece of timber down the beach. Dragged it down here because it'll make a nice cutting board. And uh, lay this guy up. He's pretty stiff now. Rigor mortis. like to hold on to the fillet and then just pull it through the knife but 
I just cut my nails, so it's kind of hard. Trying this new fish batter. Saw it at the store. It said made in Canada. And I tried it. Lemon pepper flavor. Hmm. Smells lemony. Smell it from here. Okay. Good. 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 My first bite of meat on this trip. Mm. Mm. Phenomenal. Mm. Digging the lemon pepper. Mm. Seagull's taking on the eagle. They both have an eye from the uh, carpus, carcass. I'm shocked that the seagull actually won. For now, anyway. I've been waiting so patiently, I laid it on the rock for him. And now that the eagle showed up, he's just... <laughs> Gobbling it down. <laughs> How do you put that down your gullet? Oh, ah, gull it. Ugh, eating the fins. Yeah, you might be too small for the carcass. The eagle might get that. Oh, eagle's coming back. Huh. The eagle took flight. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, <laughs> what have I done? Man, the eagle has this eagle covered in every dimension, except scrappiness. Oh, he's just a wiry scrapper and he'll take on anyone. <laughs> just pooped. It's landed in the water right there. That was close. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> He's like choking on that intestine. He's back. Beautiful rocks on this beach, on most beaches on Superior, but really nice quartz. They look better even when they're wet. Just look at those jewels. I remember the good old days when I was a kid and thought I could get rich off of these. It was a simpler time. So we're moving trace of my fire pit, just so it looks clean. That's my idea of a shore lunch right there. 
delicious. I wasn't being hounded by mosquitoes as I cleaned the fish, which often in summer can make it so unpleasant. And I got to share it with a couple of friends. There goes that wimpy eagle. Heading into Fleur Island, the archipelago south of it. Tons of islands. They're just everywhere. In the guidebook they talk about a bathtub rock being in this area and I'm assuming this is it. Pretty scuzzy though. <laughs> Sure wouldn't bathe in it, but I bet it's nice and warm. Beautiful paddling here in the Flora Archipelago. But now there's a really cool feature. It's like a very thin, shallow, narrow channel through more or less the middle of the island. That's the main lake back out there. And up along here there's a forest fire. It looks like it's not too old because there's no regrowth yet. Here's camp for tonight. Beautiful wide view of St. Ignace Island. We'll get to that later. And a really nice sheltered area to camp in here. Perfect for the hammock. Terrific campsite here, got a lovely view, but with a very cool breeze rolling in off the lake. And I just checked the Zolio, and it's looking like pretty cool temperatures for the next several days. So I don't think it's going to be sunshine and double rainbows, quadruple rainbows, much longer. But it's really the heat that kills me anyway. Like yesterday, I sweat out my soul in the sweat lodge that is a dry suit on a hot day. So uh, cool temperatures would be fine. Five o'clock, cheers. Almost done this book, Desert Solitaire, Edward Abbey. It's aged extremely well. It's over 50 years old, but it's still edgy. It's very good. Very fitting for today as well. And there's one quote that really stands out here for that makes me think of Superior. Gaze not too long into the abyss, lest the abyss gaze into the... Sometimes looking out at Superior, like an ocean, when you have a, a wide open view of it, kind of feels like that. And next up, I've got this. Gorgeous sunrise over San Ignace Island this morning. Stiff breeze, stiff headwind is already up. It's uh, 5.42. So I'm glad to be on the water early. This could be a nasty one. The sunrise just keeps getting better. Would have been a nice one just to enjoy on the beach with a coffee or tea, watch it come up slowly. But I'm on superior schedule. I'm crossing the blind channel now for St. Ignace Island. Made it. Very excited to be approaching St. Ignace Island. 
It's a massive island, second largest on Lake Superior behind Isle Royale. It's got lakes on it, big lakes actually, within it. It's uh, got one of the highest points of land in Ontario in Mount St. Ignace. But the scenery that I've got en route to getting here is going to be tough to beat, so we'll see what it brings. It's getting quite choppy out there. We just came onto this island for a breather. That's Mount St. Ignace over there, looking all dark and mysterious. Might be a short paddling day at this rate. Not a nice time to have the wreck of Edmund Fitzgerald stuck in your head either. I was planning on going over there to Talbot Island, but I, the conditions just don't call for it. So I'm crossing a kilometer and a half over to some islands closer to the mainland, and then I'll get on the mainland and might have to set up camp. Had a brief chance to get the line in in the lee of this island hooked into something, it's fighting, it was fighting pretty well. Another laker. A fighter. Oh, I just lost it. Pretty certain it was a laker. Small-ish, just the normal anyway. I'm not windbound reasonable to power through it. It's just uh, not a lot of fun. It's not like gentle, ro gentle rollers while you're going up and then down. It's like chop, 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 chop. <laughs> chop. At the mouth of the Brook River here. Pouring out, crashing into the waves. Quite a nice spot, and I found a new souvenir. My my usual. I've got quite a few of these. Oh, there's uh, it's half full. and you can paddle right through it. <laughs> oh, that's fun. <laughs> oh man, that is awesome. I'm riding again. And I'm camping close by. So I'll probably do it again tomorrow. Nice looking beach. Stopped for lunch here on this beach in Duncan Cove. And while I was cooking up my penne, I found this. I think it's an agate. Agate. Rock. And if it is, it's the first one I've ever found. There are geodes which look all like crystal-y, but an agate has these concentric rings. So I think this would qualify. It's small, but I think it still counts. Is that in focus? Hopefully. Anyway, I'm pretty stoked about that. Just hard to imagine the pressure of Earth just creating that somehow in such a beautiful form. Fene. Got Parmesan and Sriracha put in there. And then I'm gonna move on. I'm not in love with this site. Nice little beach, but aside from that, yeah. So I'm just gonna go to the edge of this cove and try and camp on the point there. There's supposed to be a campsite there as well. Hopefully I'll like that one better. 
I don't think I'll get any further than that unless I get really lucky with the wind, but I don't think it's let up at all. It's me all business getting there. Absolutely no horsing around. Whee! <laughs> Laker actually got hooked on the bottom of the jaw on the outside. I'm just gonna film him on the underwater, let him pop off. Coming around Grebe Point, it looks so tropical. The shoreline looks like it's pure beach, although it's probably all gravel. And the little mountains look kind of like Costa Rica. I want a pina colada. Yeah, I thought this point was gonna be a total war zone. Very shallow too, so the waves can really lift up on it. And they are, but not that badly. I'm able to paddle just fine. And Mount St. Ignace, just coming into view here and it's now lit by the sun. It's backlit before. It looks epic. What an amazing spot. This rock is mind boggling. And it's pretty common here. I'm protected behind a reasonably long point. And I don't really have it in me to go tackling whatever is around that point in terms of wind and waves. So I'll camp here if, uh, if I can find somewhere to actually hang the hammock. Exfoliation. Well, we've killed a, I don't know, a couple hours, maybe even more. In this spot, it's a beautiful spot. I've enjoyed it. I've got that wavy feeling in my head when you've been on the water with waves for too long. It's kind of nice. And I could conceivably camp here, but I don't, it's not great. And I don't really want to scar this pristine site with a fire. So I found somewhere else I can go just down the, the shore. And that'll do for tonight. Took the canoe over to the camping spot. The stuff's drying out because it ended up being a bit of a surf landing. Everything's drying out except for my souvenir from Brook River. But all is well. It's sunny, so dry. Ah. All set up in the Amark. Fantastic view. Here's my impromptu washing machine. I've got my shirts and pants, shirt and pants in the net, along with a few pebbles, so it's not uh, too light and doesn't go away on me. And this net has a tether. So I slapped it on the canoe here. Rinse cycle.
on Modern Family, there's an episode where Cam and Mitch talk about delaying gratification. They have this bottle of really nice wine or champagne and they just never open it because it's too nice. They don't want to enjoy it. We'll enjoy that later at a better time, more special time. Eventually they just give in and, and drink whatever they want. This is my champagne. This packaged meal of veggie pad thai. I'm always bringing it on trips and I'm like, no, no, I gotta save it, gotta save it. I bring it primarily for longer trips to just add some variety. I can't make veggie pad thai out here, or it'd be hard anyway. So, today is the end of the delay of gratification. Oh, still bubbling in there. Oh, I can't show you or it's spill it out. Very nice. Mmm. Tastes like the present. Need some sriracha though. I put that on everything. And if any meal companies want to send us some product to use, I will pretend like I like it no matter what. This is great though. I've had it before once. I'm hanging off of mountain ash tonight. I don't think I've ever hung off of mountain ash. And on the other side here, balsam fir. And you can compare balsam fir to spruce right here. This one is balsam fir, this is spruce. The balsam fir needles are flat out. They stick apart from each other, spruce needles. And they're just all over. They're bristly, spruce. Balsam fir, very soft and malleable. On the water before six again. Woke up at like four, just couldn't sleep. So I'm out here, conditions are pretty good. Waves pounded the shore all night, despite the, the wind seemed to die. And now it's still settling down, but pretty good. I'm paddling toward Hope Island, crossing 700 meters or so, halfway there. And looking at Talbot Island, which I think I mentioned yesterday, I was wanting to get there. It has some really dramatic look looking cliffs, which are illuminated by the sunrise right now and those would have been great but there I've seen a lot of cliffs so that's not a big deal however there's also an old lighthouse on there called the lighthouse of doom after Canadian Confederation in 1867 the Canadian government wanted a good network of lighthouses on the Great Lakes so that was built I think like a year after according to the guidebook the first lighthouse keeper came in and he died Another one came in, they died. The third came in, and they died. So, the government shut it down after that. They decided that this lighthouse was not so important that it was worth the lives of its citizens, but pretty crazy to have three straight light lighthouse keepers pass. Yeah, that's eerie, but I wanted to check it out. On immediately as soon as I've got my line in. I was fighting initially, none, no fight for a little while now. But oh yeah, 
A lake trout. Cool. Oh, and it's got a sea lamprey on it. Oh, come in. Let me get that off you. Oh, brutal. Okay, he's in the net. Check this out. Sea lampreys came in invasively. And they latched them on, they latch themselves on to fish and just leave them out basically. I think they detach before the, the host dies, but oh, it's just awful. Oh, no way. The lamprey detached on his own. Whoa! The lamprey is swimming around in there now, trying to escape himself. <laughs> wow. Come here. Got my hands for the trout. Nice laker. Thank you. Not a bad scar on him from the lamprey. So it probably hasn't been on for that long. And look at this nasty little guy. The bottom of their mouths is really gross. I don't know. It might be hard to get them to turn upside down, but it's like a suction cup full of teeth. His mouth there and honestly I don't know if this is an invasive lamprey or native so I'm not sure what to do with it look on my phone see if I have any offline resources for ide identifying it nasty it actually ugh, I'm gonna pick it up oh it's so gross ew I don't want to let his mouth touch my hand <laughs> to be honest Latch on to me. Oh, it's so slippery. It is so slippery. I don't think... I really don't think it's a sea lamprey. Oh, it's the grossest thing ever. I can't pick it up. It's too... There. Uh, it works with the rubber netting. Look at its mouth. Imagine having that latched onto you. Anyway, I, I did have some ID, and I don't think it is a sea lamprey. I'm pre pretty sure it's not. So I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do, either dispatch or release. What would you do? I'm not gonna record it, because there's no pleasing anybody. So I had taken a photo of, of uh, a fish ID book, and yeah, there are chestnut lamprey, silver, northern brook, American brook, and sea lampreys along with American eels. Um, but I'm pretty sure that was a silver lamprey. Not a sea lamprey. Beautiful here in Armour Harbor. Very tranquil. Very interesting place behind me. It's a nation called Narivia. Some guys, I guess over a few beers, decided to occupy that spot. I don't know if it's like a squatter situation, if they somehow acquired it, but anyway, they declared themselves a nation and they have their own anthem and flag. <laughs> Apparently it makes for a pretty funny Google search. I gotta check that out. gentle rollers today. Yesterday it was like chop, 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 chop. Like the canoeing equivalent to driving over a really rough, bumpy road. Today is just like, like that. Heading into the bay where I plan to camp tonight. Do a hike this afternoon. Wicked headwinds just kicking up here. Haven't been able to find the trailhead yet, but before I do anything, I need lunch. And yay! Souvenirs! Aluminum foil, my favorite souvenir. 
found the trailhead thanks to this little beat up flag. Hike to Mount St. Ignace. St. Ignace Island is the largest island in the NMCA region and also contains one of the highest points of land in Ontario. This peak, Mount St. Ignace, is accessed by a little known yet world class hiking trail gaining 1265 feet in elevation over its five kilometer length. The hike takes at least six hours return and is quite challenging. Here comes the rain. A beautiful hike. I was really excited for this. It's quite an adventure. And kudos to whoever is maintaining this because this is a tough trail. The guidebook described it as a dry riverbed, but uh, I guess that's seasonal. Maybe later in the summer it's dry. <laughs> it's pretty wet right now, but it's nice. Beautiful cedars growing so straight like spruce. I just did a big climb up what I thought was the trail. I'm pretty sure I lost it. I haven't seen a flag or a sawn piece of wood in a while. Must have been a game trail. Probably wasted half an hour, but got back to the trail and right at the right time. Check this out. Oh wow. Trail is no joke. Oh. You gotta climb up this part, right up the side of the waterfall. Oh. This is a tough one. Beautiful though. Spectacular. Ah. <laughs> wow. Oh. What you can see from down there isn't even the whole falls. Oh, I was wondering where the trail goes. Here it is. Seen lots of moose droppings on the trail. Just hoping I might see one at this pond. Found some moose bones out here. Ninety percent of the way there. Still almost two hundred feet of elevation gain left. And I'm getting close. Starting to get my first views. There are some beautiful inland lakes on this island. That one looks stunning. Hey! -o. Oh, here it is, the summit. Just when you think you got there before, turns out I checked on my topo. It's not it. Wow. That's phenomenal. Looks like it's raining over there. 
Oh, I might be soaked pretty soon, but I wouldn't hate it. Nice. Love finding those. Yeah, here comes that rain. <laughs> what a hike. My hat is off to whoever scouted, cleared, and has maintained this trail. Like it is, it's a beast. It's gotta be the toughest trail I've ever done. Not to mention we're in the back half of June and the bugs are pretty thick. Came over to the west side of the peak. So really, I just wanted to look back on where I'd been. Isn't it ironic? Isn't it ironic? It's like rain on your Mount Signignus day. When it rains, it rains, you know? And it's a beautiful thing. I have virtually no time constraints now quit my job. I'm camping as much as I want. And before, if I was taking my vacation time, yeah, I'd be pretty bummed. But now it's just like another part of the journey. Isn't it ironic? Hey, and look at that. Just cleared up a little so I could see the paps, see everywhere I've been. That lake down there is King Lake. It's an interior lake on this island. I have no idea if there's a trail in. I have to imagine someone has put one in if they put one up to this bloody mountain. Getting real gusts of wind now. It's just so raw up here. I'm not in a hurry to leave actually, unless it gets really nasty. What a hard existence. Every tree, the biggest tree is small. And I love this one in particular. It stands out so beautifully huge water body going right there. That's the Nipigon Strait. That leads into Nipigon Bay. Huge part of Lake Superior. And then uh, that's Floor Island where I passed a couple days ago. You see the channel goes all the way there and then there's this big island in the distance splitting it. That's where I was. I was hoping it might pass but it just seems to be picking up. <clears throat> so I'm going to get down, back down. But totally worth it. Very happy I did this. I needed it too. My legs needed a stretch. They've been sitting in the canoe. No port portages has a downside and it's that like your legs are just all cramped up. My only concern now is the descent on all these slippery wet rocks, but I'm sure I'll get there. Just cleared up a little to the west. There are a bunch of the islands that I just came through. And then many more in there and beyond. On a map, it all looks pretty easy. I'll just skip over that island and this island. It's a big lake. Next up, across the Moffat Strait over to Simpson Island.
6.30. No one touched my stuff, that's good. Got to find camp. Hey, hey, just got the canoe loaded up. And a rainbow materialized. It looks so close there, I could almost touch it. Beauty. Oh, I see a double. There's a double coming on, you know what that means. I was gonna cross the Moffat Strait just over there, other side of this island, if the wind gave me a chance, but it's still up and I'm out of gas. I've had one meal and I've been going since 4 a.m., so, you know, 15 hours. So I'm gonna stop here. There's a nice cobble beach really nicely sheltered from the wind and waves by this little spit and uh, get a tarp up so it might still rain it's on and off and get a good meal in I'm excited for that Water feels nice tonight. It's pretty chill, soaked, and that wind was is pretty chilly actually. Going back to the veggie curry tonight with rice and a generous portion. Mmm. Whoa. Looks good, even dehydrated. These potato chunks, I love them. They don't rehydrate that well, but they're kind of chewy in a really good way. Super size. There's a pretty neat little cave right in there. If I were a better YouTuber, I would sleep in there. But that sounds just awful. It's quite a tangle in the bush for the hammock too, but found a couple spots that will work. The pass. Sleep anywhere tonight, actually. Mm. It's the most tired I've been all trip. Hmm. Did you sleep in there? It's got a good overhang. Protection from wind and driving rain. But it's very uneven. It would be terrible. I'm just gonna fake it for the thumbnail. And extract still. Done. Just finished dinner. You can see rain coming across the lake. Ran over here. I'm scrambling to get the tarp up and then I can take all the time in the world to set up my hammock. Oh, yeah, I'm just hearing it start. Feels like you cheated death when you just get ahead of the rain like this. It's wonderful. This lofty pitch, I can fully stand up in here. Lovely. Another early rise. Let myself sleep in till 5.30 though. Crossing the Moffat Strait, so. I'm gonna get it while it's calm. Alright, conditions look pretty good. Some gentle rollers crashing into these rocks here. Coming across to Simpson Island. Another big one. Great conditions out here actually. Still the rollers, but there's nothing for them to crash on. This is my best required crossing conditions yet. Chichi Bay was nasty day one. Across Black Bay was nasty. Nipigon Strait, wind picked up. So, I am very happy for this. The reason I have to look out for these long bays and straits is because wind and waves can really funnel through them. 
So you could be paddling in reasonable conditions and then suddenly you're exposed in a straight and it's just a different day. So this is really nice to get to cross it safely like this. So I'm getting into the last couple days of this trip. I think I'll finish it in nine days, and I thought I'd be 10 to 12, but I wasn't, I was never windbound for a full day. I made pretty good progress every day. So I'm ahead of schedule, which is kind of sad, you know, to end early, but better to end on a high note than to dra drag it out and just fizzle out. for being in here. <laughs> so cool. I miss those calm mornings. Very exposed paddling here on the south shore of Simpson Island. Rugged and beautiful though. And conditions seem pretty good. I've got a three kilometer crossing after Simpson Island and I'm going to dip my toe in the water, go around this point and see what, see what it's like. I think this will be my chance to do it. I checked the Zolio and it looks pretty good tomorrow morning as well, but who knows. If it's good now, that's that's in the bank. So I'll take it if it is. Bear up there on the hill looking down at me. Hey buddy. <laughs> It's too wavy. Getting blown away. So cool. What an awesome vantage point to see one browsing on top of a cliff. It's looking good. Three kilometers shouldn't feel like too much if these conditions hold on. Halfway there. I'm just having my first real meal of the day. Just granola for breakfast on the go. And this chili is gonna go down really well. And garlic bread, mouth watering. And I've got my very own picnic table. It's a nice one too, reasonably new. Usually campsite picnic tables are pretty dilapidated like that one over there. Glad I pushed through this morning while it was calm. The wind's up now, it's white capping out in that crossing. I just passed out for like three hours. And when I woke up, it's probably not gonna pick it up on the mic, but something 
rooting around back in the woods. Hopefully it's not a bear that's habituated to this site. There's a little table beside the picnic table. And if it's a fish cleaning station, you know, a bear could be used to getting some scraps here, so that wouldn't be good. But hopefully it's nothing. Popcorn for dinner tonight. It's just what I feel like. Contacted her about the pickup tomorrow in Rossport. Mmm. Better than the movie theater. Put some salt and vinegar powder on there. Mmm. Body's liking that. Might have needed some salt in my diet. Perfect evening for the last night here. I'm just soaking it up. Looking like it'll be a good sunset. It's almost nine o'clock and the sun doesn't go down till 10, so still got some time, but it's been a phenomenal trip just looking back on it. As usual, it hasn't been what I expected at all. I thought I'd be seeing moose. I'd have constant fishing and I'd have really challenging weather. And really none of those things happened. The fishing was decent, perfectly decent. Couldn't actually have my line in the water a lot of the time because there was just a chop and I didn't want to put myself in a compromising position, especially in open water. But still got as many as I needed. And there's still tomorrow, who knows what'll happen. Uh, no moose, but bear today. A porcupine, which is way rarer for me than a moose. I never see porcupines. It was the second or third porcupine I've ever seen, so that was fantastic. And then some great interactions with some of the more uh, staple animals and birds. We've got the sandhill cranes and amazing interactions with beavers actually. Beavers I saw at Dawson's Creek, that was, that was amazing. I've never really seen beavers that well. And uh, <laughs> the one beaver, there was the baby crying and then the big one, it had shoulders on it. I was actually a little worried about it coming over. It was, it looked like an absolute tank. And then the weather. I didn't lose a single day to conditions. I maybe called it early a couple of times, but still made progress every day, and that's why I'm ahead of schedule. I'll finish in nine days. It's, it doesn't matter if you finish in nine, 10, 11, 12 days. Just, uh, it's about embracing whatever conditions you get on Superior. And if you get good conditions, you keep going. So there's no need to linger and drag it out. It was perfect. And I really want to say a thank you to Zach and Daryl who published the guidebook for this route, for this area, actually. There are countless routes you could do. I could do this route 10 more times and do it totally differently. It's just amazing with all the islands and bays. There's so much to see. I left a lot on the table, but I, I do plan to come back with Erin someday because she would love this. But uh, these guys are real stewards of this area. Great conservationists. They know this area so well, and that really enhanced my trip, so thank you guys very much. Cheers, thanks for joining me, and cheers to Lake Superior, my favorite lake on Earth. this fantastic book and Edward Abbey he passed in 1989 a year and a half after I was born it makes you wonder what you might be able to leave behind for a place that you love
some pancakes. Got the pancake mix with some cinnamon. Mmm. Love cinnamon. And some dried blueberries. And I'm pretty sure I'm forgetting something I meant to put in the pancakes, but these will be good enough. Also got syrup, of course. Make them nice and small, easier to flip. You want to have these all trip? There hasn't been time in the morning. It's a nice, slow morning today. Slept in till 6.30. And checking the weather. Mm -hmm. I'm always ashamed of my bad head. How is it today? Is it bad? And it looks like the rain that was supposed to come this afternoon has pushed off into the night. I've gotten so lucky with weather. I've hardly had the fly on all trip, the tarp or the hammock. I think I had it the first night and then one other night. Because I've had the weather updates, it's been awesome just knowing it's going to be clear. It was a fantastic final night, and I'm looking forward to this final day. Sun's shining, I'm gonna be fishing, and I'm heading for two bays to start off. First is called Old Man's Pocket, and the second is called Chummy's Harbor. So, that's just excellent, fine map making. Let's see if they have any fish. Map making is not for everyone, it's a passion. Some cartographers would have just mailed it in and called it whatever. Oh, just call it Bear Bay or something. We already have 47 Bear Bays in this region. I don't care. But this person, they put their heart and soul into the naming. I respect that. I'm now entering the old man's pocket. Who knows what I'll find? Spare change? Lint? Coupons for dentures, perhaps even fish. Stay with me. What do we got? Laker. Oh, he's in the net. <laughs> Pretty small. Shall just let him pop off. Thank you. The beacon! The beacon of Amundine is lit! My lord! Gondor calls for aid. And Rohan will answer. That's the Battle Island Lighthouse. It's about 150 years old. I'd like to get out and check it out, but I'm a bit worried about a wind and, and chop kicking up. I gotta get back to my rendezvous point with Aaron. Strange turbulence here. It's like there's a difference of flow. That's weird. Yeah, there's a current here. Bit of an eddy there. Strange. Last crossing of the trip. The rain's just starting to come on. We'll be in the car before long. This is interesting. I'm at another Narrows and there's current here again. Like I said, there's no tide on Superior, but there are seiches. 
which I think is mostly based on differences in atmospheric, atmospheric pressure in the lake. So you get more pressure somewhere else and it changes the, the levels and creates shifts in the water. So I'm assuming that's what's happening. It's pretty cool. Almost in Rossport now, so I'll wrap this up here. Erin's gonna be picking me up there. She's my, my shuttle. Thanks to her for doing that. It was an incredible trip for me. So many special moments. The scenery on the North Shore of Superior, there's really just nothing like it. It's nothing quite the same as it. And so many special moments. Porcupine, I never see porcupines. The bear, some nice fish, some nice trout. Mount St. Ignis, quadruple rainbow, and the morning paddles just in general when they were really calm. That I think was a highlight for me. So, thank you for joining me. Hope you enjoyed it. On to the next one. Cheers. How are ya? We got hot. I don't know, it feels like maybe a brookie. It's really, uh, it's crazy. Yeah, probably a brookie. Sorry? Yeah. You were at the Diablo Lake? Diablo Lake? Diablo, yeah. I just watched your video the other day. Oh yeah? <laughs> right on. Nice to meet you. Yeah, likewise. How'd you find that? Oh, this is a nice spec. Is it? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> nice. Sorry, I might be ruining your No, you're not. You're adding to it. You're going to be in it. <laughs> nice spec. Thanks, buddy. Probably not legal, though. Not no. quite. <laughs> no. Not with, them legal. No, oh, they're all that size. What a crazy standard, eh? Yeah. Over a half meter spec. That's a big troll. That's, that's a like, big spec. Well, that's like five soft pounds. Like, that's a big troll. <laughs> <laughs> so I, are you I just, doing another video or what? Yeah, I'm, uh, this is the end of my trip, actually. I'm finishing up in Rossport. I've been out nine days. Oh, really? Started from Silver Islet. No way. Yeah, it's been a great trip. That's, Great. A, that's a good paddle. Yes, oh, wow. <laughs> it's a good paddle. That is awesome. Pretty good weather. Yeah. How's your day going? You getting anything? No, oh, we just, we literally just logged. Yeah, are you from Rockford? <laughs> Man, <laughs> that was too funny. Run into some folks. Right as I'm getting close to the end of the trip with a fish on. And it turned out to be the nicest fish of the trip and one of the biggest specs of my life. Hopefully I got a decent shot of it. I didn't have this camera set up, so I just reached back for the GoPro. Now another fish on. Just parting gifts from Superior. That one distinctly felt like a brookie. It's fighting like crazy. This one, probably more likely a laker. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, another Laker. Hooks out. Nice little Laker. Thanks, buddy. We're switched on right now. I'll tell you what. Thank you. Just pulling into Rossport. Aaron will be here any minute. It just started to rain, but you know what they say. Here's my ride. World-class shuttling services from Aaron Outfitters as always. A fresh delivery of chips, a couple brews, and a, a Perrier. Look at that. <laughs> 